This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. Tail Enders. Much more than just a cricket podcast. Loosely cricket based, meaning we very rarely talk about yeah. um, world cricket. Yes. But when, but when we need to, we can do. Boy, can we, we deliver. As England's greatest ever bowler, you don't need to do this podcast. But why do you? <laughs> Welcome to Tellenders, a loosely cricket Thank based you for us, loosely cricket based with podcast, podcast from me, Chief Force, him, Felix White, him, Jimmy Anderson, <laughs> Dash and Tendulkar, distantly. Tailenders. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hi, everyone. The BBC have told us that we've got to issue a warning. We swear too much. Henry does beep it out for us because he's a good man. It is actually so that your family can all listen. (laughs) Your kids can listen. But we will say... (laughs) Sugar. (laughs) That's not a swear word. You said a really bad one. (laughs) (laughs) And cross strikes in the first over. It's what England were looking for. Hartley bowls down the track, comes scoring this time she connects. It's either six or out, it's six. Hello and welcome back to No Balls, a cricket podcast. I appreciate it's been a while, but Crossy, you've been on holiday. I have been on holiday and I'm going to get straight in there, Crossy. We have a guest from minute one it must be a record for us we're doing well Danae van Neerkirk welcome to No Balls Agree Podcast yeah I'm excited to be here I, I can't wait what you guys have in store to be honest you've been teasing us for a few months now because you you said you were willing to come on it you sent us a little tweet or we sent you a little tweet actually and then this has been kind of going on in the background for a couple of months now we've been so excited to get you on here yeah, well, I, I mean, I've known you guys for, for, for quite a bit. And I mean, just the conversations I've had, I was just like, oh, I, I need to get like a proper conversation with you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of fun, a bit of honesty and a bit of just, yeah, nonsense talking, to be honest. Honestly, I'm going to throw her under the bus here. But I asked her to come on during the T20 World Cup when she was commentating. She's like, oh! Oh my god, I'd love to. It'd be such a privilege. And I was like, oh my god, no, it'd be our <laughs> privilege. <laughs> no, it absolutely would. So you do need to set the scene because you two are actually sat together in a room in Hong Kong at the minute. So tell us what's going on. We are. We're in Hong Kong. Um and we are here for fair break, aren't we? Yeah, we yeah, we are. Um yeah, it's it's been uh, yeah, eye opener of a tournament, but uh it's been it's been good. It's been a good experience. So still trying to find some a proper feed. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> We've tried a lot of things which I'm not really happy with. But um, yeah, but it, it's it's been good. It's such an experience. So Danae's here playing. I'm here commentating. Um, both of our first years in fair break. Um, how have you found it as a competition? Because a lot of people won't even know what a fair break is. So I'm going to just do a little. It's basically a competition where all countries, 36 countries represented in this tournament and we all play against each other or you all play against each other. Is it weird? Like, how is it for you? Yeah, I mean, I I didn't know what to expect coming here. So I was like, you know, obviously heard from Kapi, she was there last year and um, because she was ill for a good two weeks. So she did really well. Um, So she was in the hotel room. So, but I I didn't kind of get, but now I get it. I get the initiative. Um, I'm all for the initiative. It's just meeting some of the associate and, um, you know, non is it non-associate? I got it right, but I got it wrong there. I've just stuffed that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the associate teams and players is, is just, to look at them and the excitement they have, like it, it I've said it many times in, in some of the interviews, but it's just to see that excitement, like it's it's crazy. I think I got half a headache today sitting on the side when I got out because our players were just absolutely cheering for everything. Like they are so excited. It's a single. I thought that if you just look down and look up and you thought it's a six, but it's only a one. But, you know, it's just it's that love of the game that we started playing for, you know, and you lose that. You lose that as a cricketer if you play for a long time and you like, oh, it, it becomes a job in 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 certain aspects. And seeing these these players just 
absolutely love it. You're like, oh, well, it takes you back to the time where you just love the game. Yeah, I've had the, the privilege of interviewing a few of these girls and saying, like, what does fair break mean to you, the associate cricketers? And they're like, well, we get to play against Danny Van Nierkirk, Marazan Cap, you know, Catherine Siver Brunt. And they're like, we would never get this opportunity. And the fact that they're being paid to be here as well. Like, there was a part of me when I came here, I was like, what's the standard going to be like? But actually, I've been really impressed. It's actually been very, very good. Yeah, but that's what you're going to get. I think just players playing with and against the best in the world. I think that's what the WBBL did the first year. You know, I came as I, you know, don't give him mass, but I mean, it was 2016 or something. And I walked in and I'm playing against, at the time, South Africa didn't play against Australia or the Englands as much, you know. And now you come here and you're playing against these big names. You're not on my word. You know, what is this? But it actually made made me a better cricketer and and I truly hope that this experience for for these associate teams and players is is to do just that it it changed our lives and our career and hopefully you know for many more years to come that'll that'll happen to them I get the impression from obviously I've not been to Fairbreak but I get the impression from a distance that actually the standard of the cricket doesn't matter that's that's not the point of it the point of it is to do exactly what you've you've both just said and I saw a video of a bowler getting the wicket of Danny Wyatt, I think Wolfie took a brilliant mm. catch in the deep and and like the celebrations just sum up exactly what the point of fair break is. Yeah, it's basically it is to give everyone a fair break. So it's not only the players on the field, it's people like me, it's people, you know, the umpires are getting an opportunity, it's the assistant coaches. So like for me, I turned up and they said, we're going to throw you in the deep end, you're going to present. And I was like, oh my word, I've never done that in my life. Like, well, now's the time to learn. Now's the time to you know, throw yourself in and just get on with it. And it's, I think it's been brilliant. I mean, I'm ready for home. We've still got a week left. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> it, it has. It's been brilliant. Um, Crossy, we spoke about me and Danae and where we are. Where are you? You've been on holiday. What have you been up to? Yeah, I'm home now. Um, so cricket season's just around the corner, which is actually a really nice feeling. Um, but yeah, I've been away. Went to America with my little nieces, took them to Disneyland. Um, it was not a holiday, Al. Two, like, six days with kids like w- when you're not doing anything there's no relaxing time you have to play hide and seek you have to colour you have good to good contraception <laughs> really 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 great contraception yeah there, it needs to be put on adverts more it's just like the lack of downtime that you get and then it's like 9pm they've finally gone to sleep and you have to go to bed because you're knackered so and they're up at six and there's a lot of people that will listen to this that have got kids that will be like you've done six days we've done 17 years of it um and I'm really sorry to be like you know to not understand it but it was hard work it was great though when they saw Mickey Mouse it was worth it <laughs> um do you want kids after that or is it put no you contraception advert no I've got you I've got you I don't need any more kids <laughs> Right, enough about us. We are here to get into the nitty gritty about Danae and her career and where she's at with life. Um, Shall we do the classical, we'll start with you, Crossy. How are you? What, how am I? Actually, how am I? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, how are you? (laughs) But I don't really care about me today because we've got um, someone on who's got actually not that much to talk about. You know, how are we going to fill this half an hour? I'm not sure. <laughs> Danae van Neerkirk, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> How actually are you, though? Yeah, um, I'm obviously good. Um, you know, obviously a lot of things transpired in the last couple of months, if not even the last couple of years, you know. So, um, yeah, it, it takes a toll. But, you know, I'm blessed to have a very good support system around me and especially my wife and... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm good. It's just under the circumstances, probably not, you know, the best, if if that makes any sense. I think we should take it all the way back, Crossy, to, I guess, two years ago now when you broke your ankle. And that's when you probably, is that when you first found yourself out of the team for South Africa? Um, no, actually, um, you are at, at such a great year in 2019, leading into 2019, it was, uh, the, I think it was the 19th of Feb. Um, I got a grade three he, uh, hip, a uh, femur neck, hip stress fracture that put me out for, for nine months. Um, but yeah, that I think the timing probably with the ankle, um, was not great. I actually made, 
I don't know if it was a stupid comment, but it was a truly honest comment um, the other day in an interview. And I was like, when I broke my ankle, it was it was literally, I made a joke to Cappy like probably two months prior. And I was like, how I'm playing cricket at the moment, nobody can stop me by myself. And you know, as a cricketer, like, oh, you wow. know, that saying of, I can only get myself out or, you know, and yeah. I'm not saying nobody can't get me out. You know, that it's not an arrogant thing, but like that was, I felt so great and... I literally stopped myself. I broke. I broke my ankle. I, nobody broke my ankle for me. So, how did you break your ankle? So I've read that you slipped at home. Is that what? Yeah. I mean, it's 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 hot. If I like my brother-in-law, um, Brendan, he he said he would love to see some CCTV footage on that <laughs> because um, that's the only way I can truly explain to people what happened. But um, we've got a pool, but it's. You know, the dogs are like, it's, it's they've uh, got money, they've got a pool. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you live on like a game park? Haven't you got like rhinos in your back garden? Yeah, there's, there's rhinos and all that. Shit. I think I, I wanted to say like maybe I um, ran away from one of them, you know. We, we <laughs> joked with the kids though, with the nieces and the nephews. We said, oh, because uh, they asked me what happened to your leg, you know, and they can't understand what happened. And uh, my sister in law, she said, oh, no, she told the kids, a rhino stepped on her foot. <laughs> and to this day, they want to know how the rhino stepped on my foot. So I wish, I wish maybe that that was the case, <laughs> but it it wasn't. It was, it was just, it, it happened so fast. So the pool, we have a deck, it's about a meter, meter and a half drop um, to the yard. Dogs are down in the yard. And just because of the contours of the the yard, it's it's just obviously... Uh, yeah it just goes down yeah um stupid there's stairs next to me i just climbed down instead of taking the stairs feet went under out from underneath me landed on my foot stepped to the side because it was like this cement block because it's a new obviously um it was a new uh construction so there was a cement block sticking out and my foot was landing on that and I sat down there in the rain for a good probably 10, 15 minutes crying. And my dog, Loki, that's 100 kgs, was licking my face as if nothing was wrong. <laughs> and then my brother-in-law came out because they realized I was gone for quite a bit. But I was I tried to get up and I had nothing underneath me. I was like, oh, there's something wrong here. And shame, he, he came down, he picked me up. Um, that's how strong he is, he could pick me up. And uh, <laughs> yeah, took me in. Tuppy was in full... Um, I guess full what, physio slash doctor mode, elevate, ice, you know, ice, re, you know, everything, compress. Um, but the ice on a broken leg, yeah, that I was, I was shaking for, for quite a bit. But yeah, that's, yeah, I broke my ankle. There's no, no lies about that. So the recovery from the ankle, where did that take us up to? So where, like, what, what year are we in now? We twenty twenty three, so that was twenty twenty two because it was just before they you missed they, the com games, yeah, yeah. Missed World up. Cup, World Cup, com games. You were aiming to be back for the t the t twenty World Cup. Was that the goal? No, it was actually the Commonwealth. I was very, I would, even the 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 test. I was very upset that I couldn't make the the test. Um, you know, my live stream was to be a you know captain a team in in a test. So very upset when they told me I couldn't be there but the hindsight absolutely I shouldn't have probably shouldn't have played the 100 just physically I was not where I should be especially seeing photos it's it's <laughs> proper <laughs> embarrassing to be honest but um, <laughs> you know when you're in denial you're in proper denial so um never been the thinnest but I never looked look that way so um <laughs> yeah um that was the ideal but um yeah it, it didn't work out that way so you did play the hundred. Um, we can just dip into that a little bit because the hundred's obviously a big deal over here. You you must absolutely love that competition. You did so well in that first year. Must have been difficult, obviously coming back not being one hundred percent fit in the second year. But like, what are you looking forward to this year? Where where are you up to with it? Yeah, I mean, yes, I couldn't believe that I got picked up. To be to be honest, you know, so you are one of the best cricketers in the world. No, because I, I mean, obviously, I haven't played as much. So for me, it was like. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect, and and obviously, uh, to be fair, I wasn't the best person. Um, the last hundred, 
you know, I, I was the appointed captain, but it, it kind of, I got because I'm like, how am I appointed captain, but I'm dropped, you know, like, well, how does this work? And as a cricketer, it's different when you do, when you lose out, when you injured, than actually being dropped, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and, and that's never happened in my career. Like, you, you know, I only know injury, like that's the only time that Nathan Eker gets left out, you know, is injury. And now I'm getting left out because there's somebody better than I, like, you haven't been playing. You are not fit enough to actually play. Um, not that JB and them had that conversation. They were always very respectful, very um, supportive. Um, and I couldn't see, th I couldn't understand what was going on. I was, I was fuming. Um, but yeah, th like for me, it's, yeah, that, I love the 100, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But yeah, last, the, the last season I wasn't the best, I guess, the best team player, to be fair. You've won it two years in a row? Like, yeah. how good is that? Yeah, well, again, I, I always say we've got a great team. You've done so well. How yeah. well have they done? You, you've got the same team. Yeah, you've got the same team yeah, in that's the draft. Jamie. I don't understand. I'll you've keep... lost Ishmael, obviously. She's gone to World Fire, your team, Al. But <laughs> <laughs> literally, when I was looking through the teams, I was like, no one, no one at the Oval's changed. It's the same team. Yeah, you literally have the same team. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It was obviously difficult not to see Shabby there because... When you build a team that's, and she, she was incredible last year and she was incredible the first year and she's an incredible cricketer. So, um, shame we've got, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's well done, Walsh Fire. So, obviously, that I guess happens with the draft. I was hoping that obviously she stays. Um, I was vocal about it to, to her, obviously, it, it does not matter. Um, you know, but yeah, I think JB did an incredible job to keep the team as, as close to the same as possible. So, we're brushing around the tougher subjects here. Um, the last couple of months have been incredibly tough for you. You didn't get selected for the World Cup due to not doing your 2K fast enough, if we're going to be brutally honest. Yeah. Um, how did you find, obviously, first finding out that you, you passed everything else, you'd done really well, um, you didn't make your, two t your 2K time. When CA told you that you weren't going to play in that World Cup, how did that sit with you and how did that make you feel? Yeah, um, it was a weird thing, though, because I, I absolutely failed the first test. Like, I sh freaks if I, I like, I just, <laughs> I sh the bed. I, I almost walked the 2K, um, but that wasn't the first time with the 2K and... You know, the management knew that. I absolutely had a block when it comes to the 2K. So, yeah, leading into, because it was a trial series that we had, um, I kind of knew, you know, I was a bit in jeopardy there. Um, but still proud of the weight I lost, the skin fold. So I had the highest fitness percentage that I had in five years. Um, so percentage-wise, percentage I was very proud of what I achieved. Um, but unfortunately, the... I guess the running was the prerequisite and that I un understood in a way. Um, but it wasn't the, f the first time, I guess. So you'd obviously not made that 2K time previously, but still played for South Africa? Um, yeah, so we didn't have the 2K um, back in the day, but the, I was never the fittest. That that I can promise you. So it, it's maybe not, not making the running, but I certainly got the highest percentage I had in four years and... I've played a World Cup since then. So I think that was the most disappointing thing for me was I was picked previously because I was... Good at cricket. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, and I don't know how that went out the window, to be honest, but um, I've, I've never been an advocate of saying that you shouldn't be fit to play for your country because that's certainly I never said. Um, hence, I never fought with anyone leading up to anything. Um, but I also thoroughly believe that we're not playing Olymp you know, we're not we're not in the Olympics at the moment. We we need to win games of cricket and um I believed in myself as a cricketer, as a tactician, as a captain and yeah, I just felt like that also should carry some sort of weight. It does not mean that I should not, but it's not that I came to a, a fitness test where I weighed more, my skin fault was higher, you know, my running was worse. It was actually better. Everything was better. So I did not sit to my ass and do nothing, if that makes any sense. When it all came out, me and Al obviously did the podcast that you listened to. And we spoke about how it's a really difficult balance at the moment because women's cricket has shifted in its professionalism so quickly. 
that you almost have to allow time for the players to catch up with that as well. You know, you can't you can't tell someone that they have to be fit in two weeks' time because it doesn't work that way. You obviously came back from an injury. So was there any like conversations that you've had with cricket South Africa having failed that 2K that where they said we'll allow you more time or, you know, there's another date that we can do a fitness test on for you to try and pass or was it just you have to hit this on this day and if you don't, you know, then that's it. Did they give you that warning? Yeah, they there was a cut-off date. So it was probably two, or for the World Cup, it was probably three weeks prior to to me being omitted from the the um, the tri-series. Um, and, and I took it on, you know. I said, well, I will take every last day that I could um, to make, you know, team for, for a home World Cup. I knew I was far off, um, but I would have done anything and everything and I did anything and everything to get there. And, um, yeah, so, so they did. They, they gave me the opportunity and I will not take that away from them, 100%, but that was the cutoff. Um, any other player in the country would be allowed that opportunity to to run before that cut-off date because that's when the teams should get sent in, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, they, they, they did give me the opportunity. Um, but everything leading into that final date, probably that's the thing that got me the most. That that's I think that's the process that got me. I think you need to work... To play for your country, but you can't kick kick somebody when they're down, if that makes any sense. So you say other things that were leading into that before you cut off date. What were those other things? Yeah, so um, obviously I was omitted from the the tri series, which um, I I never fought against. Obviously, I had some conversations with with the powers to be, but um, I tried to give the common sense as to you are leaving me out. Um, I'm, <laughs> I haven't played any competitive cricket and I need this competitive cricket to, to play. So if I'm in the plans and, and you know, the, the confidence in there for me to, to get that, you know, the 930 mark, then I need to play again. But I also didn't expect to just get a free pass because that's not who I've been as, as a captain or as a player in my life. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so things transpired where I got called into a meeting and I was, my captaincy was, was stripped from me um, probably maybe a week, two weeks before my final test. Um, what was the reason for that? Oh, yeah, there was, it was a good one. <laughs> so the powers to be told me that they realised that there's a reason, they, there might be a you know chance that I'm not going to make the team. So they might just take it now and then you know, the team can stay the same. And I, so I was just thinking at the time, I was like, well, that hurts because I'm, I'm literally training alone. I'm, I'm training alone. I'm waking up in the morning, training, running, doing everything I can to be here. And you saying that, well, where's the faith then? So you kind uh-huh. of telling me that you, you know, you're not, <laughs> you, you don't have confidence in me doing the 930, you know. Did so, they support you with a training plan? to get you to be fit or did they leave you to your own devices with that? Um, to be to be quite frank and honest, um, leading into everything. So there was a phase where I did. CSA was brilliant. Um, just after my, when they came back from the World Cup, I think they realised that maybe there was a bit of a hole uh, left by me. So, um, you know, I got a trainer. Um, they got me a trainer. If I needed a dietitian, you know, they they really that that I will not take away from CSA. But leading into the the three weeks prior to the World Cup, it, I, it just the wagon the the wheels of the wagon fell off. Um, I don't think they forgot about me. They just did not, in my opinion, and and, and again, it's just my opinion. Was the worst thing for me is sitting in a meeting begging to be a net bowler to my team. I think for, wow. for me that the captain of something. yeah that that hurt me the most because I was told that there's no facilities for me. There's a tri series, and I looked at them and I was like, "But guys, <laughs> so I didn't have a room in the hotel. I stayed with Marisa and my wife. Um, I had to drive home to get a car. I get it. I'm not part of the the the, the tour, but I'm still a South African cricket player. Still- and and at the time, I was still the appointed captain, you know, and. Yeah, I had to drive back to uh, PE, get my car, come back. Um, it, it was just, it was bizarre, to be honest. I just, I just couldn't understand why I cannot 
I'm not taking anyone's time because I understand you're in a series, so you cannot let bowlers bowl to me when when there's batters that need to train. But I can bowl to my teammates. I can be there with my team, uh, not be furtherly, uh, if that's a word, um, alienated from from my yeah. teammates. You know, so I could bowl to them when the team is fielding. One of the coaches can throw balls to me. I ended up training with a, a at a school. I think it was Selborne College and a wonderful guy, Murray, is the head of sport there or cricket sport or whatever. Um, he, out of his day, he came and threw balls at me for an hour. Like, uh, it, it just, it's just like, how, how can you not help me? I was told that, oh, they got facilities, but I need to spend two weeks in Pretoria. I don't want to spend two weeks because I haven't seen my wife. So... How can I not be around my teammates and not be afforded these opportunities to just bowl to my teammates? It just made no sense. Obviously, being outside of this and not knowing what's actually going on inside your camp, we saw this happen with Lizelle last summer, our English summer, and it felt like the same thing was just repeating itself and you could almost see that your retirement was going to be imminent because of what had happened. So... What what was your final straw? What made you decide, that's it, I'm going to retire from international cricket? To be fair, I just couldn't, um, Kate, I just couldn't put my body through what I did. It was unhealthy. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time alone at home. Um, I didn't see my wife. My life has always been cricket. You know, I've, I've been doing it for 14 years and um, when it gets taken away from you, yes, injury-wise, 100%, First of all, I was in a bad state, breaking my ankle, missing a World Cup, and then all of this. Um, I just, I couldn't do it for a company that do not um, appreciate and value what you. I, what, yeah. And, and, and it's not, and I've always said it. I've always said it, and I'll stick with it. I don't want you to come kiss my ass. Sorry for the, the blunt. <laughs> you know, like everybody has their day. But surely what I've given and done and what I've put my body through for the last 14 years. When you say what you've put your body through, so we know that being, me and Crossy talk about it a lot, being a professional athlete takes dedication, it takes time. You miss out on so much. You miss out on birthdays, Christmas, whatever you miss out on. But when we talk about you putting your body through that last three weeks, two months, three months, but to try and make your fitness gains for that World Cup, what what did you put your body through? Because we've spoken about it before and it's not nice. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, well, I didn't eat. And and I, I went through a, a six-week program where, again, CSA got me a trainer. I worked with the now national, the South African trainer, um, Moodley. Uh, you know, he... I worked with him. He was the Warriors trainer. He's now the national men's trainer. I, they, they gave me, you know, help. But I... I couldn't lose weight and I didn't understand. I went through six weeks of killing myself and I did not I did not pick up a gram or lose a gram. Uh, what what do you think the reason was? No, for that? and then I went and I, I saw a doctor, Dr. Von Aachen. He's the um he was the Proteus men um doctor and he was a he's a World Cup winning doctor for the the Springboks, the rugby. Um and our South African doctor, which I love dearly. Um, Dr. Tsego Fatso, um, she referred me to the doctor and because nobody understood why I didn't lose weight, but I've got PCOS. Now, at the start, Australia, thank goodness, with the Sixers, they picked it up. They gave me metformin, but what I had, metformin would work, but it can't work without something else, but they never had something else. So, And I've got a form of, uh, di not diabetes, but a sugar. So I have to get insulin and use the metformin so but I never knew that so I never understood why I'm not losing weight because I'm running myself into the ground I'm not eating um you know like it, it was just, just it was exhausted just, yeah I, I just I became despondent to be honest like yeah. you know when you just go stuff it I, I just cannot do this anymore like then I just go on a binge eating whatever I want and drinking whatever I want because me not eating or drinking anything makes no sense that I'm not, you know, and, yeah. and I got onto my medication and everything worked at the right time, guys. Like, and I got the comment that, oh, well, maybe you just had to start earlier when I got omitted. And I was like, but do you guys know that 
I needed this. Like I needed the help and everything worked. It's not medication doesn't start like this. It's not a flash where you go, oh, there you go. Beautiful. It, it's working. You, can, you cannot say that because what I did and what I put, I, 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 I dropped three minutes almost in, in less than two months. Three minutes wow. on a 2K. Like, were you walking your 2K before that? <laughs> <laughs> Very close to it. <laughs> Very close to it, honestly. Just to clarify, so even knowing this, that you've got the medication that's going to help you lose your weight and get fitter because you've finally found what's been kind of stopping you, Cricket South Africa still didn't say to you, if you continue on this stuff and, you know, another couple of months down the line, you might be fitter and hit that 2K time. Did they give you that option or did you then walk away and retire at that point? Um, <laughs> I had some funny conversations, Kate. Um, I had some funny conversation. I think just without going into too much details, I just realised that I'm done. Like I've always been done. Um, I've never been the fastest runner. I've never, never been the fittest a cricketer um, for South Africa. That that's never been me, and it's not being arrogant about it. It's just literally me. I've I hated running my whole life. I don't like running. I will do it, but. I've never let my team down when it comes to winning a game for my country. I've never let my team down when it comes to fitness in the sense of my fitness was the reason why I couldn't take a game through. I've won games of the back of my bat many years. And as I said, literally, I was, yeah, but, but do you get what I'm saying? Like without being the fittest, because yeah. I knew how to, I love playing my country and I loved winning games for my country. And that, that got me. So no matter how unfit I was or how exhausted I was, that pride and that love that I had to to win games in my country, you forget about being tired. Yeah, you forget about being tired. You forget about being not the the epitome of fitness, you know, because apparently yeah. like we have to look a certain way to be an athlete. But like nah. They yeah, they it was never that there was never those conversations, even though the whole world won't know. What the conversations were leading up to to my fitness tests, but you know, I gave everything, and I will say that with pride, and that's what I said, and I've said it before. When I sat in the meeting, they told me, "Dana, you are not picked for the World Cup." I said, "I'm heartbroken, but I pack my bags with pride." That, that those were my words. How did you then feel commentating? So me and Crossy have spoken about this a lot, and. We've been brutally honest on this podcast. When you're out of a team, the only way you can get back in is if that team's losing. And there's part of you that wants the team to lose. How did how did you honestly feel watching the World Cup? Did you want South Africa to win? Yeah, uh, I, I did. But I'm not shy to say that I was very conflicted because I knew that if the team did well, which I expected because it's a team that I've helped grown for many years. Yeah. You know, so which I expected that the team was going to do well. Um, but I knew that if something good came of this World Cup, which I, I hoped for the players that I absolutely love in that team, you know, my mates, you know, people I've grown up with, not just your teams. wife. It's people like, yeah, my wife, you know, so... I wanted them to do well, but I also knew, as I said, if this goes well, everything that transpired would get pushed under the rug. It won't be asked. There's no question asked. And that's it, you know. And, and for me, it was just like, it was a bittersweet moment, in my opinion, because I also wanted to be there. That's why I broke myself to get to <laughs> PE, what they call Klaveja, maybe said it wrong, but... <laughs> that very well I've practiced for weeks and I still can't say it back up <laughs> but I wanted to get there I wanted the band to sing the national anthem I had tears in my eyes in, uh, at St George's I had tears in my eyes because I wanted to be there I wanted to experience that and seeing players experience that I was happy for them but I was also like bitter because I did not work 14 years not to be here like it, yeah 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 it's just to be honest, as I said, I'm happy for what happened because the country needed it as well. But it just threw a rug over what was transpiring. Yeah. Me and Al have both had those scenarios where, for me, it was the 2017 World Cup, our home World Cup. 
Al obviously was part of that and won it and knows how life changing that that was for the team and for women's cricket in the UK. Al then has hers where she lost her contract and now commentates on the team that she played in and it's obviously really difficult and I think everyone listening to this podcast can hear how passionate you are about it and how how much it would have meant to you and I think watching that final I was was I back home by then I can't remember but it looked unbelievable the atmosphere at New probably you got knocked out <laughs> yeah we were gone we were way gone um yeah by South Africa for God's sake um but yeah the atmosphere looked incredible so like on that day can you like talk us through how you were feeling? You know what? I'm I'm glad you brought it up because people was like, oh, you are such like obviously the trolls, the, the amazing people on 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 social media is just oh they are wonderful. <laughs> people, yeah, the trolls on on social media was like, oh, how did you go to India knowing that it's a semi final and a final? I was like, oh, I think for my, I think for for me, <laughs> at the end of the to day, to get away from um, it. Oh, yeah, I, I needed to. You know, I loved commentating. I absolutely love commentating. And I hope, um, you know, that there's there's a space for me, you know, in, in some time to do that. But um, I needed to get away from everything because it was just, it was just hard. It was hard. It was hard because I'm standing there listening to, to my country, our country, singing this, this amazing national anthem. And I can't, I can't sing it with my teammates. Yeah, it... It was, I needed it. I needed to go and I needed to train and, and just get away from the noise, I guess. So I guess, well, I mean, the, the next bittersweet thing then is you're getting picked up in the WPL, probably not expecting to. <laughs> is that fair to say? No, oh, very fair to say. It's <laughs> yeah. really like, I, yeah, yeah, I almost fell on my back. But does that not show you how for you and your... I know from knowing you, you're a player that lacks self-confidence, right? Yeah. But does that not show to you how good you are? Yeah, I, I needed it because, as I mentioned earlier, like I don't want somebody to kiss my feet for what I, you know, what I've yeah. done. In, in, yeah, like I, I honestly, I don't, I don't expect that. But you know, that was just a bit of validation, something I haven't received for quite a, quite a long time. You know, I, re I received validation from from certain management within our, our team um, with with regards to the fitness and the weight and all those things. But, you know, that was just a validation as I'm you're still OK at what you do. You know, um, my 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 worth. And that's also one big thing why I left is my worth was based on what CSA thought of me. And it, it was just yeah. not healthy anymore. So what was the I guess the final decision for you? Why do you, I get oh, there's two questions in one? Why do you feel like you're not in that team anymore, and why did you retire? I think uh, personally, and and I'll say that I think now I can. Um, I I'd always believe that it is a personal thing. Um, I was always been a vocal person. Um, you know, I always held players and management accountable myself as well. It was never me against anyone it was always even if I didn't do my job I would hold myself accountable and you know I, it's maybe an environment now that that's not maybe what what's needed um and again I'm just speaking about a personal I guess view um I've always held people accountable I've always asked questions whether it's right or wrong um I always had the right things um in mind um I always had the best intentions for my teammates um I got alienated from the team. 100% I was injured. I, I get it. Um, you know, new captain, you know, different views, different, I guess. But uh, there was a comment made to me as to, I don't, I think I lost the respect of the group. And I jumped back and I said, well, how do I lose respect from a group if I'm not there? So that that kind of got me. And that was leading into the trial series. And I was like, but how do I lose respect if I'm not there? What is the then and and my literally my words were, but then it's an internal problem at the moment because I'm not there to, to lose respect, you know. I'm not. I'm at home in a moon boot or running around like a crazy person. Like I'm not I'm, eating. Yeah, not yeah. eating. Not how am I losing respect from players? So I just ask like this has to be an internal thing. And and again, it's it's a personal view. it's It's definitely not facts or but I can only speak from my point of view and and that is what that was for me like 
when that was said to me, I spoke obviously a lot to Marisa and I was like, there's a big problem here. There's, there's uh, a big problem at the moment. How was Cappy with it all? Because she is very much your first person on a team sheet when it comes to South Africa. But her wife isn't being selected because she's too slow at running her 2K, but she's a world-class cricketer. That must have been incredibly tough for your wife. Yeah, because Cappy is always... The, the, the one thing about Cappy that people need to know, she's black and white. There's no grey. Um... She gets it. You need to. You you need to be fit. You need to be fit. That that's a fact. Um, but she also knows who's going to win her games and who's going to help her win games for a country. Not saying nobody else can't, but no. And I guess South Africa proved that in a way by getting to the final of the T Twenty. Yep, they did. But again, it's T Twenty cricket. The gap, and I'm, and again, I'm not taking away from anything, but we need to speak about long longevity. You know, we need to speak about how we're going to get to the World Cup. Uh, we need to be better now for the next two years. How are we going to be better? Do we have the personnel? Do we have the players to do that? 100%. Yes, maybe we do, maybe we don't. But you don't throw away years of experience, years of experience winning games for a country. For what? A short-sighted final? Yeah, I'd, for me... Again, it's 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 a it's a bittersweet thing. Um, but as I said, Kapi, she she took it harder, harder probably than I did. <laughs> well, we saw we actually like Crossy. I think we mentioned it together. We saw Kapi crying at a few national anthems. We saw her hugging you. Like it was hard for us to see as like just yeah. England cricketers and cr- fans. Well, it just goes to show that there's it's not just your story Darnay eh? like you have so many relations in that team you've got fr- friends and obviously teammates but you've got your wife in that team so it goes deeper than just you've retired from international cricket there's so many levels to this story and Cappy is obviously a huge part of that because she has to deal with the emotional side of your story as well as losing a teammate yeah but now that you say that like at the end of the day my originals has always been we, we speak about the originals and that's the people that's been there for me. Um, and I will be frank about it. I said it to Alex before we had this podcast. Yeah. We had to have a, an emotional beer before the podcast. Yeah. Um, I only had five or six of the other current South African teammates just wishing me well for my next venture. Wow. In, in uh, So it just shows you that how alienated I became in that environment. Yeah. And, and I wish I knew why and what I did. Because if I knew if I did something wrong, 100%, I'll try and rectify it. But if I'm not there to to know what I did wrong, then, yeah, so... So I hit hard when you've played cricket with these girls for, let's just call it 10 years, because, you know, you've known these girls since you were a kid. Now you're 29 years old. And only five of them text you to say, congratulations on your career. Good luck moving forward. Like... How how did that make you feel? Well, initially, because obviously your phone blows up, like it just goes on and on. And, um, you know, only like pro- probably a month after that, I, I sat with Cuppy and we had a conversation and she was like, oh, and, and you know, the X, Y and Z message. And I was like, oh, funny enough, no, like there, there was no, there was no message of a, even a shop, like thumbs up, well done. Yeah, or, th- you know, just well done. You don't have to say thank you. And I was like... I got something wrong badly somewhere or somebody got something wrong badly somewhere. Like it's either uh, or. And if it's me, I'll I'll wear that hat, you know, but not once has somebody come to me and say how badly I got it wrong. So I'm trying to to figure out where, when and how. Um, I've always loved carrying this team and not in match, like, Carrying in the sense of uh, results because, oh, I will probably be killed after this. But, like, I love my teammates. I loved working with them. I loved leading them. I, I absolutely loved every part of being a leader for a team that I felt like would create something special. And or maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I really seriously got it wrong and I didn't realize it. So, it's obviously, it's not very often that in international athletes get to write their own 
retirement story and I'm presuming this is not certainly how you would have written yours 10 years ago. But let's try and finish this on a happy note because you have had an <laughs> unbelievable international career. You've been the face of Cricket South Africa for a very long time. So can you give us like some of the highlights that you've had over the years, some, some, you know, some of your most cherished memories that you'll take away and when you finally do process this whole thing, you'll be able to look back on with fondness? Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got many. Um, firstly, just the friends I made. You know, like you guys know, playing international cricket for so long is it's just friends you make for a lifetime. Um, you know, and, you know, it's people. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't play for so long, <laughs> <laughs> but you made friends for longer than probably I played. So, yeah, it, it's it's just literally. I think the relationships, um, the people I I met, um, somebody that absolutely is dear to my heart is our doctor. Um, I mentioned her earlier, Tsekhofata, just a wonderful woman that I never thought would come on my path. Somebody that's been through me through thick and thin. Um, you know, I, again, the originals, um, I, my love for them will, yeah, that's... Who are the originals? So the originals, obviously Shabnam is my Trisha Chetty, Minion de Priya, um, Lizali, Marazan Cup, myself. Um, Ayabonga Kaka, um, Masabata class, but um, yeah, it's just, it's friends I know I've made for a lifetime and, and you know, certainly they've been there and then obviously captaining my team to, to semi-final. Um, not, it's not about the semi-final, it's just 2017 was one of the best times of my life. Uh, that World Cup was so special um, because I knew then that as a captain, we've created a environment where when people off off the field come to you and compliment you um, with your team and the people around you, um, uh, that's one of the proudest moments because I knew that then and there that we created such a healthy and, and great environment. So, yeah, and, and certainly leading my country, that that will always be so dear to my heart. And it's really sad that it ended that way, but fond memories and you know, cricket has given me so much and I cannot be more thankful for that. Cricket's given you so much. You're currently fighting to find the love back for the game. Yeah. What is next? What have you got cricket-wise coming up? How are we going to get that love back for you and playing cricket? Yeah, I think just, I think this phase should end. I think, as I mentioned to you, Alex, um, so I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm under, I guess, yeah, a magnifying glass, you know, show, show them why you shouldn't have been left out. No, it's not about showing anything. It's about obviously just, um, as you say, finding the love. Um, I'll say it open and honestly, I think um, the company, CSA, has taken a lot more than the, what they might let off. Um, they won't know it because it's personal and, um, you know, I hated the game for, for quite a bit this last couple of months. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just holding on to the good memories as we spoke about now. And, and I just want to play, just be on the park. I've been on the park for a couple of times now and um, getting the bowling back, getting that confidence back. And I hit two fours today, so I was proper proud of myself. So. <laughs> Go down there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's just about, yeah, that love, that just the, the fun factor and not... There's no, there's nothing to it, you know, it's just, just... Do you think you'll get that back? I I hope so. I pray to God I do. Um, but, yeah, it's only my third game back, so hopefully with time, I thoroughly enjoyed myself the last three games, so hopefully with time it'll just come back and I, I can enjoy cricket again. Unfortunately for us, Crossy, we've got to play against Danae. I know. She's coming over to play well, the Sunrisers. Well, that, I always think about that opening game that we played for the 100 at the Oval when I was bowling oh. at you. You hit me for four... <laughs> That celebration is still used on Sky's adverts. So I see myself bowling and getting hit for four and you punch in the air. And like, for me, I think, obviously, I don't know you too personally, Danny, but you've got so much cricket on the cards still. You know, you've been picked up in the WPL. You're getting, you're going to play in the WBBL and the 100 and fair breaks. You've got all these franchise tournaments to travel around and play in now. And you're playing domestic cricket in England this summer for Sunrisers? Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, you've you've got so much cricket still left on the cards that actually the retirement from cricket South Africa, I know you're not going to get to play for your country again, but there's still so much to look forward to and that should really excite you. It's the start of something else. Well, you? to be fair and to be quite honest, it feels like a weight was lifted off our shoulders. So wow. I think it's just enjoying cricket again, as I said. 
So, but but thank you. Like that that means a lot. Like you know, you lose sight of of who you are and and what you what you can give. Um, still, uh, when when things are down, but it's awesome to have people like you guys, like like the OGs, like you know, family and all those things to make you realize. And even these leagues, you get picked up and you don't understand why, but then, you know, you get reminded sometimes. So hopefully, you know, with time, I'll, I'll give a lot. Otherwise, I might just be a housewife. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for coming on. We've wanted you on for weeks. Congratulations on being one of the best cricketers in the world, a fantastic career for Cricket South Africa. You've been amazing. You are leaving behind a legacy, whether you like to know it or you not. You are. Thank you. Um, and thank you for coming on No Balls. That's all I wanted to do is just leave a bit of a legacy. So they, thank you guys and I had so much fun. Thanks, Dano. Don't forget you can email us on. <laughs> no Balls Podcast at bbc.co.uk No Balls Podcast at bbc.co.uk Well done. Thank you for everyone getting in touch with your questions for Danae, but we totally forgot to read them out. I can't lie. <laughs> to be fair, we, I could have carried this conversation on for at least another hour, but I know it's dinner time in Hong Kong, so we need to let you go. But there were some amazing questions, so maybe we'll get you on another time and be able to ask you some that aren't about <laughs> We can have some fun. We can have a 2.0. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll okay, so be in 2.0. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. <laughs> right, we'll see you all next week. Bye, probably. everyone. Bye. Bye. And cross strikes in the first over. It's what England were looking for. Hartley bowls down the track, comes scoring this time, Chicken X. It's either six or out, it's six. Attacker had very good knowledge of banking systems. $2.1 billion in stolen funds. The cyber criminal group. It was the Lazarus group again. These are smart guys. The Lazarus Heist is back for a brand new season. We're following the latest twists and turns in the incredible story of the Lazarus Group hackers. The Lazarus Heist, season two from the BBC World Service. Listen first on BBC Sounds.